sports fans, thanks for stopping by the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Today is just a recap of Michigan's utter destruction of Penn State. If you got a chance to watch this game, you came away pretty happy if you're a Michigan fan. I mean, one of my keys to the game was holding McSorley under 200 yards of offense, and we held him to 77. 77 yards of offense. 83 passing, minus 6 rushing. What a tremendous tremendous defensive effort by Don Brown. His scheme was outstanding. The players executed it almost to perfection. The only time Penn State scored was when it was 42 to nothing. And you could see the Michigan was a little bit not as intense and they gave up the score. I could tell Harbaugh really wanted that shutout. You know, just jab that knife back into them a little bit because of last year. And I'm all fine with that. You know, that's what makes a good rivalry. You know, it's nothing dirty. You know what? It just makes it more interesting next year when we go back to Happy Valley. Just some notes about that. Think about that. Three straight wins versus ranked teams. Three straight wins. Wisconsin, Michigan State, Penn State. And, like, domination all over it. Right? The closest game was Michigan State and... Hey, kudos to Michigan State's defense. They're looking pretty good. They held us to 21 points. Michigan could have put up more points. We didn't. It doesn't matter what we could have done, right? So, Michigan State looks the best so far out of all those three teams. Now, I hope they can play good against Ohio State, but we'll see. That's next week. Three straight wins versus ranked teams. Outstanding. Of course, you might have seen it. The last time Michigan's done that has been was 1997. Good year for us. Well, we'll see. Uh... Three turnovers. Nice job there getting the fumble from McSorley on the botched handoff. And two picks and good returns, obviously. We had the pick six again by Watson. And then another one there. So defense was doing outstanding. Won the turnover battle three to zero. That was one thing I noted, too, that Penn State seemed to be turnover prone. And Michigan took advantage of that. And talk about rushing. Start the game, opening drive, gave up one, one play, 25 yards then. Run, sack, sack, right? Get the ball back. Go down eight straight runs. Just run, 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 run. Right up into them. Just like setting the tone. We ran 52 times, 52 times in the game for 259 yards rushing. Like, yeah. You know why? What did it do? Time of possession. 37 minutes of time of possession. If we have the ball, they don't have the ball. I mean, that's going to be key against like, Ohio State and whoever we play in a bowl or, you know, other game at the end of the season. So, got to have ball control. Again, the offense did enough. Did enough, wore them down, and then we started getting some breaks. Not quite like the Michigan State game where we started getting five yards of rush towards the end. It still was tough. We had to do a lot of fourth down conversions, right? Now... Also, good note, the wide receivers were getting separation. It was windy, so some balls were a little underthrown. That's all right. It worked. Patterson, two touchdowns throwing, no interceptions, 11 of 17. Great. Oh, and if you saw that, Tariq Black with that outstanding touchdown catch called back for a hold. Yeah, that's too bad. I was really hoping he would have been able to get that. We still continued the drive and scored. Now, unbelievable rushing Unbelievable defense, and I don't know if like James Franklin was trying to set this up that he really thought they were going to lose. It's during the week you saw his comments like where he's been thinking Michigan, 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 like the tweet, like he tweet, tweeted Michigan like a hundred times. It wasn't a hundred, but like thirty times. And then later on he's doing a press conference and he's saying how Michigan DBs hold and it pass interfere all the time. You know, those are just things that. I don't think a, a regular coach is going to do, right? You say it during the game to the refs on the sideline, your sideline, but to say it in a press conference, it sounds like you're whining. It makes you sound desperate. And to me, when your coach does that in the middle of a big week, it just tells me that he's trying to get any advantage he can, which tells me he knows he needs any advantage he can. Like, he knows his team isn't going to win. He's trying to get any help he can get, especially from the refs. And you know what? Just kicked their butt. Kicked it, kicked it, kicked it. I loved it. Oh, that was a fun game. Honestly, when starting the season, I was wondering how this stretch would go. And then 
you know, as Michigan kept getting better and better and better, it's like, okay, beat Wisconsin. All right, then you beat Michigan State, and then you had the bye week. Perfect bye week. Perfect. Regroup, refocus, crush Penn State. That's why I like, that's what Michigan football is supposed to be. Destroy your enemies. See them driven before you. I'm sure there are some Penn State fans crying in the stadium. Please, I at least imagine it. Right? Conan the Barbarian quote there. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the women. That is best in life. <laughs> oh, sadly, it wasn't all super positive. Um, it's The story came out, uh, McCaffrey, in the last, like he had to carry, he carried the ball a few times, and right in the last drive there, he got tackled and broke his collarbone. I don't know how long of a um, recovery time that is going to be. It depends, obviously, how bad of a break it is. So he might be back in a couple weeks. I don't know. It, it may be for the bowl game. We'll see. But that's a tough break. So uh, automatically, Peters is back probably to number two. And then Milton. So at least Milton should probably be going on the road trip to Rutgers. Uh, that's one silver lining I can see there because I was hoping that Milton would maybe get into that game if Michigan plays as well as they did against Penn State. They should be able to beat Rutgers and then, you know, maybe get some backups in there. So I guess maybe Milton can play in that and use another game because he, he's got three more games he can play in before burning a red shirt. So, outstanding game, total domination. Michigan could have scored a few more points. Don't, to be fair... Penn State had that uh, blocked field goal taken back by penalties. They also had where our Watson slipped at the line, and they had a wide open touchdown for that too. And they missed that throw, so they had they left points on the field too. So all in all, when it's all said and done, all you do is look at the score, right? Doesn't matter what really happened. You look at the score: 42 to seven. Not going to complain about 42 to seven versus a ranked team. Just think, all those big time recruits were there again. This is like the last big hurrah for recruits. I don't know how many come for a senior day versus Indiana. So this is the last big recruiting trip, probably. And what an atmosphere. I know it wasn't a night game, but I like 3.30s personally. And, you know, you finish in the dark. And it's really cool. You got to see the whole stadium. It was a great crowd. So just outstanding. Woo! Really happy about that game. So what were your thoughts? What are your biggest takeaways from Michigan destruction of Penn State? Does this just make the rivalry turn up a notch that Jim Harbaugh was review, right, asking to have catches reviewed and you know <laughs> calling timeouts to get defense set? Uh, me and my friends were like, yeah, well, maybe not the timeout to uh, review the play, but you know, well, is he not done coaching? Did he? Should he just go to the locker room? The co he's done as a coach? No, he's coaching still. He's coaching. So why is he going to stop coaching? If he sees a mistake in the lineup on the defense, shouldn't you call a timeout to adjust it? You're just supposed to be, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to care anymore. So I think that's just stupid when the TV talks about that. He's still coaching, right? And you're supposed to coach. Now, what are your comments? Let me know in the, in the section below. Thanks for watching, and as always, go blue!